Okay, if you're just joining this tutorial series, this is a walkthrough of how to record your voice, essentially talk to ChatGPT and get it to talk its response back to you. Typically ChatGPT, of course, is uh, a text only chat interface and we're gonna talk to it. So what we've done up to this point is bootstrap a Node Express and front end application. We've set it up so this record button initializes a recognized stream using Google Cloud's speech to text interface. And now what we need to do is we need to be able to actually record the user's input and pass that to Google's uh, speech to text. So let's get into that. So this is a recording library for Node. Uh, it says it's compatible with Google Speech to Text API and the wit.ai speech API. And they tell you how to install it. Let's go ahead and do that. Again, we know that's installed because it's been added here to our dependencies. Now, of course, we need to require that. The next thing we need to do is the same way we set up a recognized config, we need to set up a record config. So same sample rate hertz on the recording, and we're gonna leave a default for the silence here, which is 10 seconds before it detects that we're no longer speaking and ends the recording. Now, I remember we had put a placeholder for our recording. So we need to record and assign a recording to that variable. We also initialize this recognize stream here when we call our API record voice function. So once that's been initialized, you say then record voice. So let's go ahead and call a function called record voice. And what we're doing is saying if that variable recording has not been assigned, if we don't have a recording in memory, we're going to set that up using our node recorder, passing in the record config, and then we're going to start a recording. If there's an error, we're going to log that error. Otherwise, we're gonna pipe that recognized stream out from Node. And then we're just gonna log that we're listening for the user's mic. Now, you'll see this node here, ensure that Sox is installed. If we go to their library here, they mention under their dependencies that you're gonna need Sox. And I'm using a Mac, so it's just brew install Sox. I can go ahead and run this so you see what it looks like, but I've already got it installed. Linux, Windows instructions as well. And they also tell you what all these parameters do. So you may want to play around with those, but this is always a good idea whenever you're installing a node package, just kind of read through the docs, look and see if they provide some examples, look and see how they document the different methods and parameters available to you, et cetera. Uh, if you get stuck too, you can always look under issues these are open issues and by default, Git always does put that in there. But what I like to do is just put my error in here. Say we just look for whatever this is. And that way, even if it's been closed, we can look at it. So if it were closed, we'd click under this closed here and we'd see resolved issues where people had the same problem. The maintainers of the library maybe responded or the community responded with an answer and that issue was closed out. Okay, so back in our code here, let's uh, go through this again. If there's no recognized stream, create one. Oh, I uh, need to add that conditional. If no recognized stream, then record, and then return a sp response that we have successfully started recording. So let's see where we're at. Start our server back up. Let's push this button down and see what happened. Uh, Looks like we hit our API point successfully. That's a 200. And we got a message back that we we're recording. So, so far, so good. On the server side, we see this method was called. Recognize stream was initialized. I'm not seeing listening, maybe because I forgot to save here. Let me uh, try again. Now we see listening. Okay, I just forgot to save. So let's see where we left off on the front end here. We kicked this whole thing off by on record down, handle server record. Here's that function. It calls our API, it gets the data back, and then it passes it back into its uh, on record down function. So we wrote some notes for ourselves to manage the UI. So ideally, like this button would be changing from record to stop record. Uh, we'll handle that stuff later. Right now, what we want to do are these two points. So we told the server to access the user to mic and start recording. After that happens, listen for the transcripts results. So I'm going to add this in here. And 
I've got this function called toggle transcript polling. I haven't made that function yet, so let's do that. And we'll just put it up top here. Okay, so I'm just going to log that this is happening and log whether we're setting it to true or false. You can see we're passing this parameter active, and by default, we're setting it to false. If it is active, we want to set this variable transcription interval to a JavaScript interval. And if you, if you don't know JavaScript intervals, it's just a way of setting a repeating function call that happens every X number of milliseconds. So if we go all the way down after our closing brace here, we can see this 1000. So that's our interval. Every one second, we run this anonymous function here. And what are we doing inside that function? We're saying, make another API call to get transcription. So we're gonna try and get the status of the transcript from the back end. And then if the data that came back contains a script, we're gonna find our audio transcript and write the script to that HTML DOM element. So if we go back to our HTML itself, remember we said, here's our audio transcript and it's gonna just replace this with our transcript. Otherwise, we're gonna clear this transcription interval. Now we haven't made that transcription interval variable so let's do that here and then let's jump to our back end here and add that endpoint to get the transcript so same as we did for record voice app.get api get transcription and we're just going to respond the value of stream script and if you remember stream script we declared it up at top and it's just an empty string by default okay so back over to the front end again we're getting that script back. We're writing it to the DOM. By default, it's an empty string, so we won't see anything. And that's all accomplished through this handle server record, which was called by on record down. But we've got this empty record up, and obviously that needs to stop the recording. So wrote a note to do all these things. But right now, let's focus on, first, let's toggle that transcription polling to false. We don't need to look for any new results. And then we'll make a function handle server stop record so just like we did handle server record we've got handle server stop record this is an asynchronous function that returns a promise that gets an endpoint on our api called stop record voice and then it resolves the promise unless there's an error in which it rejects it and logs the error so this is a common pattern you can see a lot of our coding can just be a matter of duplicating what we've done elsewhere and sort of modifying the code. You'll also see that I'm bouncing around a lot back and forth between the front end and the back end. And I just like to do that to make sure that there's no places where we've called an undefined function and then just forget that we ever did that and, and not write it out. So I should probably be stopping and testing my code even more than I am, but good practice when you're working to just always be checking in on the code you've written before you get too far down the line because it becomes harder to root out the source of your problem. Again, we've got this record voice function. Let's get stop record voice and a log that we're stopping. We're gonna call a function called stop record voice and we're gonna let the front end know that we have stopped. Remember when we started, we created this recognize stream and now we're pausing that recognize stream. When we're all done, we're going to clear that recognize stream, but we won't do that until we have a file that has been spoken through the front end and finishes. By the way, where am I getting all this code? Am I just making it up? No, I'm usually copying from some example and then using the project documentation to extend it to do the things I need to do. And a good way to always get to the right documentation Google Cloud has so many different services and things like that, it can be hard to find. But because we're using this cloud speech NPM module, NPM always has a page on any module published in the registry that has the documentation. So if we look here, we've got some kind of samples of how to use the thing. That's a good starting point. And it should link us to the official documentation. And that's how I actually found out how to do some of this streaming stuff. So I went to the client libraries. I found a tutorial on streaming audio in Node. And this was the key for how I got all this code up and running. Anyway, back to the code. We've got a record voice or stop record voice. Probably a good time to test and make sure 
everything is working. So let's go ahead and start our server. Refresh the page. No errors right off the bat here. None here. That's always a good thing to check as well. Just make sure. We're toggling transcription polling, true. We're toggling it false. So we know that stop and start thing is happening. It's showing us our API network requests here. And we're getting all 200s back. And on the back end, looks like we got a stop call twice. Let's look for that API stop. Oops, we're in the front end. Not sure why that happened. We may need to uh, keep an eye on that. Oh, I think I know why. You have two logs. So take one of those out. Should be good. Let's restart this and actually speak and see if the speech recognition is working. This is a test of speech recording and ideally I should see things on screen with what I've said. Printing it out. I see it on screen. So we've got recording working and writing to the screen. Next steps, we need to pass what we've said on to ChatGPT via their API, get a response back, write that to the screen, and also pass it to an audio player that's going to play the file back in a human-like voice. So that's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we'll tackle the ChatGPT stuff. See you there.